Aikum Jamian wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Audhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahi rahman rahim Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salam ala ashrafil anbiya wal mursaleen. Habibi ilahi al-alameen. Abil Qasim Mustafa Muhammad. وعلى أهل بيتها الطيبين الطاهرين المحسومين الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنحتدي لولا أن هدان الله According to our narrations by Imam Muhammad Baghr alayhi salam the day of Ashura was one of the saddest events that befell the angels in the heavens they were devastated by grief and sorrow and they could not comprehend what was going on during that day. They had cried and bewailed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how this could happen. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted them some relief. He created an image in front of them showing nine Imams from the line of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Eight of them sitting down and one of them standing up. And Allah said, do you see the one that is standing up? Through him I will seek revenge for this day. Now, according to the hadith from our beloved holy prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Which is near accepted by our Sunni and Shia brothers. The Holy Prophet ﷺ says, There will come a man from my progeny and he will bear my name. He will come towards the end of time and he will restore justice and peace. My dear brothers and sisters, we know who this person is. This is none other than our leader and our master, Imam Muhammad Al Hassan Al Mahdi Ajalallahu Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif. When this beloved Imam salam returns, it is incumbent upon all followers of Ahlul Bayt to be his servant. It is so important that our sixth Imam, Al Imam Jafar ibn Muhammad as Sadiq salam said, Indeed, if I were to live to see him, then I would be his servant throughout the duration of my life. Now, this is showing the significance of this Imam alayhi salam as Imam Jafar Muhammad al Sadiq alayhi salam was our sixth Imam, but he even would serve the twelfth Imam. Now, with any role that we seek, even today, there is, you know, we have to prepare for it. So, inshallah, I would like to take the time to talk about two points, two important points, where we talk about the importance of preparation, what we need to do to prepare, inshallah. The first and the, mo the utmost most important thing to prepare for for the Imam alayhi salam is to, to examine our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is to seek nearness to Him as well as purify ourselves. Because if Allah is pleased with us, the Imam alayhi salam will also please with us. However, if how can the Imam accept us if we're not if we don't please Allah? Additionally, when we're obedient to Allah, when we have trust in Allah, when we're pious, there is no fear that can overcome a believer. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Nah Ayah 99, there is no authority over the believer who puts his trust in me. This is one strong declaration by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he makes direct reference to shaitan. Shaitan with all his deception does not have an effect over the believer who puts their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And where do we see this? Where do we see mu'mineen who put their trust in Allah in the result? We saw it on the 10th of Muharram. We saw it in the companions of Imam Hussein alayhi salam who truly had yaqeen and trust in Allah. A couple examples, you know, we had Zuhair ibn al Qayn, one of the companions of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, who stood as a human shield while the Imam alayhi salam was doing salah. Additionally, 
On the day of Ashura, he even famously mentioned, even if I were to die 1,000 times for Imam Hussein alayhi salam, I would not leave him. Now, there's also another story. This is just one person. Another one is Amr ibn uh, Qarta Ansari. What did he do? He pleaded to the Imam. He asked him to join the war, join the battle. He, Imam reluctantly agreed and he defended the Imam to his last breath. And at the very end, when he was on the floor, he turned to the Imam and he, and he asked him, Ya Ibn Rasulullah, have I fulfilled my duty of obedience? And Imam Hussein alayhi salam replied, Verily yes, you shall be the one that will go to paradise before me, offer my salutations to the, my, the Prophet of Allah, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And let him know that I'm next. See my brothers and sisters, this is, this is, this, these are the companions that we need to follow. Throughout the month of Muharram, we listen to these lectures, we read books to, to, to learn as well as to adapt. So this is, this is how we need to be. We need to have certainty and trust in Allah that we will be victorious at the end of the day, inshaAllah. And the only way, the most important way is to have that trust and that faith in Allah. Next, the next, you know, I briefly mentioned the relationship that we have with Allah, you know, that's internal. Now I want to focus on something external and that is the relationship that we have with others. Mostly, you know, in the aspect of giving and being generous. According to our narrations, Imam Mahdi Sharif is known that when he comes, he will distribute the wealth and pro property of the world without counting. So the issue of poverty, of you know, injustice and all these things will disappear. However, there is an illness that we currently have in the world, not only the Muslims, but everybody in the world, and that is greed and selfishness not type 2 diabetes or obesity although that is a big problem and we do need to watch what we eat however this is the main problem that we have in the world and yes the elite mashallah have the few at the very top have taken advantage and have you know uh, hoarded all the resources however we should not you know sit aside passively and just point the finger and say you know they're the ones to blame they are the ones to blame, but it doesn't mean that we should sit down. And I will give you an example. One of the problems that we have in the world today is hunger. It is estimated by a study that we currently have nearly 850 million hungry people in the world. Imagine, during the month of Ramadan, we fast. When it comes to iftar, we storm and you know eat. Now these people imagine, these people don't have iftar. So put yourself in that mindset of being in Ramadan when you're fasting, and then you don't get iftar. And they have calculated that it, is, it takes approximately $30 billion in order to solve this issue. Now of course, the trillions of dollars that we spend every single year on wars, on artillery, on everything, yes, we can make a case you know that if they spent, if the world leaders spent a portion of that, we would have solved every problem. However, they also did a study and they showed that even when we have nearly one billion people who are well off, I mean who are hungry, we also have a proportionate amount of people who are well off. And it takes approximately one dollar a week, one dollar a week to solve this problem. But let's say we don't even have that one dollar. In this country today, we waste nearly 40% of our food. That is roughly 165 billion American dollars. We can solve the hunger crisis five times over if we wanted to. Now, my point with this is, whether it's money or whether it's donating the food that we have, the extra food that we have, we should be open, we should be giving. This is what Islam, this is what the Prophet, peace be upon him, taught us. You know, even, even if we don't have enough money, we shouldn't say, Ya Allah, give me, you know, billions of dollars and I'll create a masjid, I'll create an orphanage and this and that. We can, we can act now. 
whether it is by money or whether it is by you know offering our time or you know giving advice to people and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in uh, uh, Surah Baghara ayah 245 he says who is the one that would like to give a loan to me so that I can multiply the rewards so in essence Allah is you know saying who is the one who's willing to step take that step of faith and do business with me who is willing to do that so that I can reward reward him multiply it and abund give it to him abundantly and we also see a hadith by Imam Ja'far Sadiq alayhi salam who says if a person if one person helps his brother or sister relieve one of their issues then Allah will grant him 1,000 needs and one of those needs is Jannah. So, you know, when you do business with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you, you know, it's, 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 a sure, it's a sure bet. But the important thing for us about this is not necessarily to seek the reward in the Akhirah, but it goes back again to preparing for the Imam alayhi salam because the Imam, peace be upon him, is going to come to bring about justice and eliminate oppression. So the least that we can do is when we see a fellow brother or sister in need, whether it is financial need or whether it is, you know, our time or to speak a few words of wisdom, you know, to help them to uplift their spirits. You know, there is, it is of the utmost importance. Let's not only look at the reward, but let's look at it for having the Imam and preparing for the Imam. Because, imam Hussein, because the Imam Mahdi alayhi salam is going to come in order to seek, to, to seek revenge and bring about peace and justice because Imam Hussein alayhi salam started that revolution nearly 13, 1400 years ago. In conclusion, my brothers and sisters, we often ask Allah to hasten the reappearance of Imam al-Mahdi alayhi salam, but this, this is good. We ask Allah to make him come so that he fixes our problems, but we should ask ourselves what we can do to alleviate his problems when he returns. On a night like this, the Imam alayhi salam does not shed tears, rather he sheds blood. It is over 1200 years that this beloved Imam has been waiting. And if you ask me, inshallah the timing will be soon, but we have a lot of responsibilities. We always say, La bayk ya Hussein, la bayk ya Mahdi. Instead of expressing it with tongues only, let's also express it by our actions. In conclusion, I would like to ask Allah to guide us to prepare for the Imam alayhi salam. May Allah, inshallah, help all the oppressed people around the world and strengthen them. May Allah grant us the intercession of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, the 14 Masumin alayhi salam, and all the 124,000 prophets alayhi salam. And may Allah hasten the reappearance of our 12th and final Imam, Al Imam Al Mahdi, Ajalallahu Ta'ala, Faraja Al Sharif, Wa Ira Ila Arwah Al Mu'minin Wa Al Mu'minat, Nahdi Thawab Surah Al Fatiha, Ma Salat Ala Muhammad Wa Ali Muhammad. Amen.